How's it going, everybody? Budget Pokemon here. With only about one month left until Scarlet and Violet officially releases in the Pokemon TCG, I wanted to take the time to take a look on some of the best cards that the Sword and Shield era gave us. Specifically, the alternate arts. Now, this only includes the normal alternate arts, if you will, doesn't include any of the Trainer Gallery cards or Galarian Gallery cards, because I might want to rank those individually in the future. But this will be the same as I did the last time around, where I ranked the character secret rares from VMAX Climax. So I will most likely put up a picture of the card I'm ranking currently, so that you can see it better. But anyways, let's get started with this tier list. We have a lot of cards to rank. I don't know if these are... if this is more cards than in the in the VMAX Climax ranking, but let's start it off with the easy cards, I suppose, and then then we'll move on to the more difficult ones. Like right off the bat, the Rayquaza V from Evolving Skies. This is actually the first alternate art I ever pulled, and it is still one of my favorites. Like the illustration itself is super super nice. Of course Rayquaza is the main focus, he is above the clouds, and you have, of course, Sinia in the background. This is this is such a cool illustration to me personally. Definitely one of my all-time favorites. There are a few more easy ones that I can rank right here. For example, the origin form the Alga V from what we call it, Astral Radiance. That is such a nice illustration. Also, one I've pulled in the channel. I promise you, I'm not just. Uh, putting the one in S that I've pulled. Now this is like legit one of the better ones. Of course illustrated by uh, Mitsuhiro Arita. An absolutely gorgeous illustration. Let's see. What can we rank next? I guess we'll just move on to the RCSV. This is also like one of my absolute favorites. As I said, I'm putting the easy ones first and then it will get tougher to decide where to put things. But this once again it's just super cool to me, of course, you have Arceus, the god of Pokemon, just floating above Sinnoh. And it's just such a magnificent illustration, like truly. What else can we put here? I'll try to find the Palkia, there you go. While this is kind of cool, this just doesn't do it for me as much as the Diaga, if you will. So I'll put this in B for now. This might end up going higher in the future though. I might I might move this around um, at some point, but right now this will stay, stay in B. What else can we rank here? Let's rank the Conkeldur from the Pokemon Go set. Let's just put it at D because I am not really a huge fan of that illustration. I don't know, it just doesn't do it for me. Okay, so let's move it on to the Mewtwo. The Mewtwo V also from Pokemon Go, I'll put this at C, mainly because I'm not a fan of these like 3D illustrations. I pref I much rather prefer these like, I don't want to call them normal illustrations, like these ones that are actually properly drawn instead of computer animated. Like something like this looks way, way cooler to me than, than this. This is still pretty cool. Of course you have Mewtwo just floating around, kind of looks like he's like in Times Square, like New York Times Square. But, other than that, I think C for me personally is fair. Let's move on to another easy one, the Zera Aura V from Chilling Rain. This is another one that is, oh, it's so, so beautiful. I mean, you have the horizon in the background, Zera Aura, and you also have another few Pokemon in the background there, which is what I love. I love illustrations that feature more than one Pokemon. I just love this. This is part of the reason why the the Go Lurk for me is like an A tier. It's not S tier, not as not quite, but this is also a really cool illustration. The best part about the Go Lurk V from from Evolving Skies, this illustration, like this card, is incredibly cheap for an alternate art. At least it was last time I checked, and that is an incredible. Let's see what other easy ones. Can we rank? I guess the Reggie Draco is kind of similar to the to the Golurk. You can see the Lugia in the background of the card. 
And the card itself is also really, really nicely illustrated. Not quite up there with S tier, but definitely, definitely an A tier. The Giratina V. This is actually kind of... Kind of difficult for me to rank. Like, I do want to put it... Here, but then at the same time, I prefer the Palkia more than the Giratina, so... I'll just put it in C for now, I don't know. It just doesn't do it for me. I don't know what it is. It is definitely very well illustrated, don't get me wrong. But it just doesn't do it for me. I think... I think uh, part of the reason is that the illustration itself is like in a very, very interesting style to say... To say it like that. It's a very interesting style that you don't see everywhere, but it's just not for me, that's why I'm putting it at C. Let's see, the Blaziken VMAX. I know this card is quite popular, but unfortunately, even though it is a Gen 3 Pokemon, I have to put it in D. I don't know, I just don't like it, like, at all. It is cool, because you have different Pokemon in the background together with the Blaziken, which is what I like, but it just doesn't do it for me, I'm sorry. It just has to be the D tier. Let's see, the Rayquaza V Max. You know, the Rayquaza V was the S tier, the Rayquaza V Max. While it is kind of cool, I think I also put this in C, to be honest. Um, the background, like the jungle in the background, that is definitely very nice. But then other than that, you just have a huge freaking green snake floating in the sky. Although just looking at it now, maybe it is a B tier. Maybe I'll switch this around at some point. Maybe I'll switch it up to B. But for now, let's put the let's put the Rayquaza V Max in C. Let's just do it like this. There's a few more cards. A few more cards. There's a lot of cards we can still rank. Um the Medicham V, also one of the cheaper alternate arts that you can get. I'll put this in C for now. You once again have like a lot of different Pokemon in the background, which is what I like. But then again, the the illustration itself, while it is very well illustrated, it doesn't have that pop for me that I say, oh wow, this is amazing. Let's go for another easy one. I'm trying to find the, the Charizard V from Billion Stars. Yeah, there it is. The Charizard V. That's also a really, really easy S tier for me. I mean, you have the dynamic battle scene with the with the Venusaur opposing the Charizard, both of them fighting. Maybe a continuation of the other cards that we have seen from Charizard, where he is always fighting the Venusaur for some reason. I don't know why. There's like a bunch of them. Recently, the ones from the Charizard Ultra Premium Collection, where where, no, he's fighting Mewtwo, but there's also one where he's just sleeping, like maybe, maybe relaxing after the battle, in fact. But this is, this is a really, really nice, nice illustration. Let's see, a few more easy ones. I mean, the other easy one is the, is the Lilligand. This is, I do want to say this is S tier for me. Like, the Hisuian Lilligand, this is such a cool illustration, and the best part about this as well like, similar to the Golurk, it is incredibly cheap. Like, this illustration is super, super nice. Just look at the amount of different Pokémon featured in this. And it's not just, like, Pokémon you can see. They've also illustrated Pokémon that you wouldn't be able to see. You've got a swine up underneath the ground. And you've got also to what looks like a Basque Legion or something underneath the ice. You have, like, a Pachiriso in the tree. This is, this is such a nice illustration. I really, really love this. I really love this, that kind of illustration. Um, going on with the theme of other Pokemon in the background, the Glaceon VMAX, to me, that's also like an easy A tier. I just love this. It's Glaceon, of course, the Ice, the Ice Eevee evolu the Ice Evolution. And maybe... They are just freezing over the lake, so the other Pokémon can enjoy it, you know, skate above the ice and everything. That's like such a nice illustration to me, I love this. Absolutely love this. Let's try to go for another one that I can easily rank, like down below, like very, very far down. 
Oh, you know what? Let's go for the Sandaconda. The Sandaconda? I don't know what to think about that illustration, honestly. Yeah, so the Sandaconda is just coiling up, lying next to the heater. But then that's about it. Like, there isn't really much going on in that illustration, is there? So that's why I... I think a D tier for me personally is fair for that one. There is a lot of more cards. It's getting it's getting a lot more difficult to rank these. You know what? Let's rank the, the Mew. I'll rank the Mew at A. I would love to put this at S. Because this is like one of the few... One of the few um, Mew alternate arts that we've gotten. And there are a lot of Pokemon in the background. But it's just there is missing something. Like something is missing from that card. That just doesn't put it at S for me. I don't know what it is. But it is still a very nice illustration. Similar to the Mew VMAX. While it is very cool. I'm gonna put this at B honestly. Honestly, I you know I love Mew. Mew is my favorite Pokemon. But this is... I don't know. It doesn't have, like, that one thing that puts it above the others, right? And what I will do now, I will compare some of these and see if they do fit or if I have to move some of these around. But let's continue on with the Neuvern V. The Neuvern impersonating the, the whatchamacallit, the Batman, jumping from a building and everything. This is like easily an A tier. This might even be S tier. This is like one of the few few cards that I would absolutely put at S tier. But I'll put it at A for now. This is a really, really nice illustration. So let's put it at A for now. And leave it at that. And moving it on, I think I want to keep the evolutions for like... For alas, the other evolutions. Let's see, what else? Oh right, the Aerodactyl. The Aerodactyl V, that is also a really easy S tier. Like, once again, it's just flying above. You have a lot of, lot of different Pokemon in the background. You have like a, a little river right here. The water looks amazing. And you also have the volcano in the background. This is like, this is another top-notch illustration. I really, really love this illustration. Let's see, the Lugia V. I've, I've actually pulled this recently in um, in a few German booster packs that I've opened, which was absolutely insane. Didn't expect that, to be honest. And this illustration is, once again, it is really, really great. I really love this illustration. I do want to say S tier. But I have to put it at A tier. Like something, don't get me wrong, this illustration is beautiful. Like 100%, it is really, really beautiful. But just something about the pose that I don't quite like. Like there, there would have been a few other ways that this illustration could have been done. Right now it's still pretty good, but the, the pose of the Lugia is what what kind of destroys it for me, if you will. It doesn't, doesn't have that quite S tier. S tier worthiness, in my opinion, so I'll put it at A. I might switch this around. I might switch this to S. But for now, I think A. I'm comfortable with putting this at A. I'm comfortable with putting this at A. Let's see, we have the Galarian Zapdos V. Running up a running up a hill. Another, another alternate art that I actually pulled on the channel. And I'll put this at A. This is cool. But it just doesn't doesn't have the S tier for me. Like S tier worthiness, if you will. Let's try to find the Articuno. Now the Articuno is definitely the the worst of the trio, if you will. And the let's let's rank the Moltres simultaneously. I think maybe this. I do kind of want to split up the birds. I don't know if the if the Moltres V has like that S tier. It does look really cool. You know what? I'll put this at S for now. I might switch this down, but so far that's the ranking for the birds. That actually is similar to the to the VMAX Climax ranking that I did. I also split up the birds in, in that video. So we have the Articuno at B, we have the Zapdos at A, and we have the Moltres at S. Kind of splitting them up like this. Let's see, the Hizuian Sneasler. Let's put this at A. 
This is like another one, another really cool one. Sneasler is a really cool Pokemon in my opinion. Like, and it's climbing a mountain up to like, I don't know, it's family or something. You have the horizon in the background. This is, this looks really, really nice. The rising sun. I love this. Absolutely love this. This might even be S tier, but for now I'll, I'll put it A. I don't want to put everything in S because that would just be boring. I guess the, the skunk tank will put this at D and hear me out. This illustration in itself is nice because you actually get to see something that normally you wouldn't, if you will. You have like this cut through through the earth and you can see the tunnel with all the, the like babies lying around here. And they are just gathering berries or something or like fruits. You have the paris up above the ground and everything. You, have to see, you see the roots from the tree. This is a really nice illustration, but I just, I don't know, it doesn't do it for me. There it is, the Greedent V. Actually, you know what? I'll switch this around. I'll put the Skunk Tank at, at C and the Greedent at V. I mean, this is kind of cool. He's like being carried on a on a tree, actually. I didn't even see that. He's like sitting on a tree being carried while eating berries. It's a really happy illustration, but it just it doesn't do it for me. I'm sorry. It's just not for me. Same with the Duraludon V Max. I mean, Duraludon in itself, I I don't know how to say this. It's kind of a weird Pokemon, eh? It is kind of a weird Pokemon. So let's put this at D. It's kind of weird. So let's put this at D and don't ever speak about it again. Let's go for the breakdancing Genesec. Let's put this at C. Once again, you have a few Pokemon in the background, or just one. You have the Smeargle in the background. A very interesting art style, different from from the others for sure like this is a very different art style this is also last time i checked this was also one of the cheaper ones of course we have the normal duraludon we have the duraludon with raihan now this is i actually i really like i'll put this at b and here's my reasoning for that if you just look at the card you have of course the duraludon which is the focus of the card you have raihan sitting with the duraludon together and they are enjoying a, a nice meal. Looks like a curry of some sort. It's like Raihan cooking. And you have the Rotom phone floating above them, maybe making a video or something. This is like really, this is really, really nice. I really like this illustration. Might even be A tier. Hmm. No, I'll leave it at B for now. Might want to switch that around later on. Let's see. The Celebi V. I really like this. But I'll put it at A. This is actually a pretty nice illustration. You have Celebi floating through, I don't know, a park or a forest of some sort. It looks like a park because there are, there are some stairs there. And all the trees that, that Celebi is passing are growing leaves. And it looks like the other tree that is that doesn't have any leaves now has like this magical effect around it. So whenever Celebi goes there, this will grow tr grow leaves as well. And Celebi itself, like, really happy illustration, really, really cute, and I think A tier is, is fair for that one. Let's see, Machamp V, Machamp, Machamp V. This is kind of also a difficult illustration for me to ring. I'll put this at C, just because there is so much going on in the background. You have the Machamp carrying a lot of things, you have also a, a trap inch somewhere in that illustration. But for me, the proportions just seem just seem a bit off. So this is why I'll put this at at C. Rotom V. This is actually kind of a nice illustration. I'm gonna put this at B for now. And here's my reasoning for this. You know how Rotom has all these different forms, and while well, you can see that right now in that illustration, you have all the forms that Rotom can take. In this one illustration, you have like the microwave one. You have the washing machine. You have the the fan. It's it is such a such a cool illustration. I think the Rotom at B is fair. Same for the um, Galarian Perserker. I really like this illustration. Like if you have the Galarian Perserker, maybe it looks like he's paying for something and he's like super happy about it too. I mean, just look at that little rascal. It's getting more and more difficult for me to rank things. Because we're getting to the point, similar to the VMAX Climax ranking, where I don't know where to put things, honestly. Let's put the the um, the Rapid Strike Urshifu VMAX 
Let's put this at B and the other one, the single strike at D. Just because, I mean, I don't... I don't know how to say this. I don't really like Urshifu that much anyways. But the, the Rapid Strike illustration is definitely multiple steps above, above the single strike for me. Similar to the... well, actually... The single strike or the yeah, the single strike Urshifu V, the normal one, that itself is also a D tier for me. It's just him lifting a big rock and everything. And like that's about it. But then again, you can say the same thing for the rapid strike. He's just standing on a whatchamacallit? On a pillar. And like trying to train, I don't know, but some for some reason this looks really this looks so much better than the single strike for me. Maybe because you have more going on in the background and everything. But there we go, we've ranked the Urshifus. So that's four cards gone already. Let's rank the the um, Calyrexes, shall we? Let's just put these in in order. There we go, we have the, the Shadow Rider, we have the Ice Rider, and also the VMAX and the... Yeah, and the VMAX versions of them. So, Shadow Rider Calyrex. Let me look at this illustration. Okay, so once again, you, you have some Pokemon in the background as well. Let's put this at D. Now, the Ice Rider Calyrex, though, this one I really like. You have, once again, a lot of Pokemon in the background. So, you have, like, what, a Teddy Urser, a Deerling, a Sveal. Actually, let's put this at the same level as the Glaceon. I really like this illustration. Let's continue on. The Empoleon VMAX, one of the first Alton Darts introduced in battle styles. And once again, you have a lot of different Pokemon in the background training together with the uh, Empoleon, of course, the Phalanx, most notably. And you have the Mian Fu actually training with it. I wasn't sure about the name. The Mian Fu, the Phalanx, and they're like, it looks like in a valley. There's like a waterfall behind them. This is like a really, really cool illustration. You know what? I'll actually put this at A. Just like, mmm, mmm, no, I'll stick to B. I'll stick to B for this one. We still have a lot of cards to rank. Maybe I underestimated how, just how many cards there are. And this is without the Galarian Gallery and Trainer Gallery subset cards. Like, this is just, just the normal alternate arts. And it's kind of a lot. What else can we rank? The Sleeping Tyranitar. Let's put this, let's put this sleepy boy, I want to say B. Yeah, let's put this at B. You have the Pig Knight in the background, and you have the Tyranitar sleeping from eating too much, by the looks of things. And it is a cute illustration. You have the Shade of the Tree as well. And other than that, this is, I really like this illustration. I think B is fair. Um, Tyranitar, the other sleepy boy, let's put him together with the Tyranitar. I think that's fair. The Dragonite is actually kind of nice. You have, once again, Pokemon in the background. Looks like, what, a Fero and Spiro? Yeah, Fero's and Spiro's in the background. And then it looks like he's floating above a jungle. And like, some of the clouds there. I like this illustration. I think going it goes well together with the Tyranitar, so let's put these both together in B. That seems fair. Let's rank the, the Unknown V next. Let's put the Unknown at C. And the Unknown itself is kind of cool because the the Pokemon itself spell out the name of one of their attacks, which is Victory Symbol. And other than that, there isn't much going on, right? It's still a pretty cool illustration, but definitely not on the level from the other ones from the same set, like the Reggie Draco and the Lugia come to mind. So I think C is fair for this one. Let's see. The Gengar VMAX. This is a cool illustration, but I'll just put it at C. Or I'll put it at B, sorry. I'll put it at B. I mean, I like it. It's just sucking in everything. Just look at this, like, trees. Everything. And it's like... It's not a full moon, but it's like midnight, it looks like. We have like a scary or spooky looking castle in the background as well. Like there's so much going on in this illustration. And the back of its throat is like making a darkness symbol, which is kind of a nice easter egg, if you will. This might even be A, but for now I'll leave it at B. 
I'll leave it at B for now. Let's see what else do we have here. Tornadoes. Tornadoes V. This is also one of the, the cheaper alternate arts, but I'll put this at C. This would actually be a D tier if it wasn't for 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 the Pokemon in the background. There's like a lot of different Pokemon in the background. And th that like saves it for me. That's like saves it for me from a D tier. So I think C C is where this is at. Blissey, I'll put Blissey at D. Just because there isn't much going on in the illustration itself. It's just Blissey sitting around. And then that's it. That's a really boring illustration to me personally. Pretty well done, don't get me wrong. But very, very boring. Let's see, Honchcrow V. Let's put this at C as well. Once again, you have the Honchcrow sitting around and then underneath. And also right next to them, there are a few Murkrows. You have like the horizon in the background. I kind of like this illustration. Once again, this saves it from being a D tier. Let's see. Let's rank these as fast as I can. The Lumineon. Now the Lumineon, I really kind of like that illustration, honestly. This is this is so well done. It's like underneath the water, you have like some some seagrass and stuff like that. You also have like the ripple effect above it. Kind of like looks like it just dove into the water. But then again, Luma Neon in itself kind of isn't an interesting Pokemon. I'll still put this at A. Just comparing it to like the Celebi. This is definitely, definitely on the same level. I really like this Luma Neon. This is so well done. Only a few Pokemon left before we finally have to move on to the to the evolution. Let me just see. Uh, these are all the evolutions. Yeah, okay, so we have these these um, six cards to rank before finally moving on to the other evolutions. Let's go for the for the Shadow Rider and Ice Rider Kelly Rex. Let me just look at these cards again. Ooh, the Shadow Rider Kelly Rex. I actually quite like that illustration more than the Ice Rider. You know what? Where is where's the Ice Rider? We'll put the the Shadow Rider at B. And the Ice Rider at C. It's kind of like the different effect. Maybe, actually, we'll put the Ice Rider at, at D. Because for some reason, the Ice Rider is pretty boring compared compared to the Shadow Rider. Like, the Shadow Rider looks really, really nice. I like this. You have, like, the night sky and everything. The light in the window of, of that house. The snow on the... Is it snow? It looks like yeah, it is snowing. You have the snow on the trees. I this illustration is really cool. The the what should we call it? The slow king. Just be simple and quick. We'll put this at D. The art style just isn't for me. I mean, if you love this art style, then more power to you by all means. Luckily, our opinions are different because otherwise, if if all of our opinions were the same. We would just have a single car that would be the best and it would be more really, really expensive. But thankfully, all of the opinions are different. Um, let's see, Galarian Rapidash. To be honest, I've kind of forgotten about this card. I'm not gonna lie, it's really colorful and everything. But I'll just put this at D together with the others, with the other ones. Just looking at these illustrations, yeah, I think D is fair for me personally. These ones are a step above those. Let's see, the Beedrill V. This is like also from, from which one? Is this from Silver Tempest? No, this is from, from Astral Radiance. Just like the Hizui and Lilligan. Let's put this at B. I like the colorful illustration. You have a lot of different flowers there. Of course, a lot of different Beedrills. Uh, gathering the pollen, it looks like. Of course, they are, <laughs> they are bees, as the name implies. But other than that, this is... I think B is fair for, for that illustration. We have just the Inteleon VMAX left, and then we can finally move it on to the Evolutions. Inteleon VMAX. This is also kind of difficult for me to rank. You have like Inteleon. Going up really high, of course, in the VMAX form. And then trying to snipe someone. Hmm. Can see really far. It is night. 
You know what? Let's put this at let's put this at C. There you go. Let's put this at C. So the Leafeon just lying in a pile of leaves and being kind looks like he's being kind of surprised by being awoken by someone. Let's put this in B tier. Let's put the Leafeon V in B tier. Because I think that's fair comparing it with the other illustrations. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. The Glacion V, this is not on the same level as the Glacion V Max. I mean, just look at it. It's just lying on a park bench. And it's kind of bored. Like, it doesn't know what to do. It's just kind of bored, just lying there. Ah, don't disturb me. So we'll put this at. I don't want to say. Do I want to say C tier or do I also want to put it at B? Let's. We'll, We'll say C for now. I might switch this around. Let's see. The Espeon V. This is. Is this an illustration by Soso? Oh, it is. Okay. I kind of like this illustration. It's like. It has a lot of books floating around. You also have a book with like Eevee on the cover or something. I don't know. Maybe reading up on Eeveelutions itself. But. Let's see. Let's put this in C as well. So far, the Leafeon... Is the Leafeon really the best one out of those? We'll see, we'll see. We will see. Also, I forgot to put this one there. The Sylveon? The Sylveon is just looking... It looks like it's in a... Um, whatchamacallit? In like a bakery or something. And it does have a few cupcakes. In its, what am I, like one on its paw and then one on its freaking, I don't know, fairy tentacles, whatever they are. But I think this is on the same level as the Espeon. Don't really like it that much. Now the Umbreon V. The Umbreon V, I'll actually put it A. This is the, the second evolution, I'll actually put it A. And here's why, I mean, it's just Umbreon, of course. There is the full moon behind it. You have like an alley, and you have all these other Pokemon like looking up to, to Umbreon, kind of like their gang leader, if you will, or something like that. I really like this illustration. This is this is awesome. Let's see. The Flareon V, I also really like. The Flareon, of course, next to the fireplace, will also put this at A. We'll put the Vaporeon at C because that while well, the illustration itself is is nice, it is kind of boring. It's just Vaporeon lying in the water. And then we have the Jolteon. Dude, the Jolteon is also really nice. I'm... I'm... Thinking about maybe placing this in A as well. Because I do like the background and the reflections on the glass look absolutely stunning. You have the cars and everything underneath. Yeah, I think... I think A is... A is fair for this evolution. The Umbreon V Max. Oh boy. We are at the at the VMAX cards, and this is this is like the most expensive alternate art still to this date. The Umbreon VMAX reaching for the moon. Last time I checked, still at around 500 euros. Still the most expensive alternate art to this date. Here, see, here's the difference. There is a really, really huge difference. If you actually have the card in hand between the Japanese one and the English one, like the difference is day and night, you wouldn't even believe it. The texture, I mean, you know, if you have some Japanese cards, you know that the quality of them is much higher. And you probably also know that the, that the texture is much, much finer. And if we're talking about Japanese quality, then definitely that's an S tier. I mean, the illustration itself is okay. But what really makes this card one of the greatest is the use of texture. Like, if you ever see, hang on, I'll actually, I'll try to look this up. Okay, so I found a picture just to illustrate how good the, the Japanese texture is of this card. Just look at the moon and look at these fine lines from the moonlight going all the way out into the artwork. Umbreon itself is also really, really finely textured. You have this glitter effect above the whole card. And this just looks beautiful. Like, this picture is really well taken. It it doesn't do it justice. Like, believe you me. In person, this card looks so, so beautiful. So I think, yeah, I put it at S. I think S is, is very, very fair. 
for that card. Let's go for an easy, easy one. Lithion, Lithion V Max D tier. It's it's that simple. I just don't like it that much. And similar to the other ones, the Flareon is C. The Vaporeon V Max is B. The Flareon is better than the Lithion. If I could open the card, I can't open the picture anymore. Oh well. And the Vaporeon VMAX is by far way, way better than the normal Vaporeon V. Once again, you have a lot of different Pokemon in the background, like a Milotic, as I can tell immediately. And it's just swimming underneath the water, of course, as a Vaporeon would. And there's much more going on in this illustration, which is why I, I'm putting it above the Vaporeon V, the normal one. The Jolteon VMAX. Hmm... Let's put this at C as well. There's, once again, there's not much going on. You have Jolteon, of course, and you have a few lightnings. And then a forest. Like, a town or a little house surrounded by a forest, and that's it. It's really well illustrated, don't get me wrong. All of these are very well illustrated. But, I think C tier is fair. Let's see, the Espeon. The Espeon VMAX. Just sleeping on top of a house. How the house isn't being destroyed, isn't being crushed under the immense weight of a cat that is literally the size of the house itself is beyond me. But this is a nice illustration. Once again, you have a few Pokemon in the background and the town itself. Hmm, this is, this is interesting. Do I want to put this at B? I think B is fair. B is fair, and here's why. Because the Sylveon VMAX, I'm gonna put it A. The Sylveon VMAX is such a nice illustration. Like, truly, just look at it. It's the same for the for the Sylveon VMAX. Look at the card with, with like look at the Japanese version of this card with the texture. You will be you'll be blown away by how good the quality is and by how good this card looks. With like, with like the Japanese texture and the Japanese quality. It's insane, like, it looks so good. But yeah, that's it. That's the list, let's just go through it. I think I'm, I'm happy with where I placed everything. I'm still debating pushing the, the Lugia up to S. Or keeping it down at A. This, this is actually a very, very high S contender. I really like this card. And I'm not just saying that because I own it. It's, this is such a nice card. Hmm. You know, some last minute adjustments are in order, maybe. Let's, let's push the, let's push the Lugia up to S. Some last minute adjustment here. And I think with everything else, I'm, I'm happy with, I'm happy where everything else sits. Yeah, I think this is it. Well, anyways, this this is my, my tier list for the Sword and Shield alternate arts after some last minute adjustments. And I have a few more videos coming up regarding the Sword and Shield era. You know, before we do move it on to the Scarlet and Violet era, I do want to do a few videos talking about the Sword and Shield era. So stay tuned for those and check out some of the other videos I've uploaded um, the past few weeks. Um, stay tuned for the stream on Saturday. We'll be streaming once again Pokemon Omega Ruby. And other than that, thank you so much for watching. Peace, peace.